Hey everyone, today we are going to be diving into the first lesson of our Flame C programming tutorial, and this is going to be how to set up your environment to program in C. First up, we need to decide between Windows or Linux because setup process differs just a little bit between the two of them. On Windows specifically, you'll have to do a little bit more legwork to get access to GCC, which is the GNU compiler collection, because it does not come pre-installed. Now, to gain access to MinGW, we simply go to any search in your web browser and type in MinGW64. Now you can see here, there is a download section. This is the tricky part. Uh, they've made it easy for you. You can go to SourceForge and download an EXE and directly install it in one click. But I, I, I want to show you the way to do it properly. Uh, you simply click down here on the web dev kit and then go up to mingw-w64builds uh, installation. Click on the GitHub there on that link. It's going to open up the link to the latest release. If you click on that, you can go down and you'll see all of the um, different versions for the release. Now, the one you're after, uh, you want to look for x86, 64, and then release Win32. Uh, and then if you click on that, it will go ahead and download that, and you'll get a copy in your downloads folder. Once the file has finished downloading, you can choose whatever tool you would like to unzip the file. Simply double-click on it in your download folder here and extract it uh, to the location of your choice. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pass it to my desktop. Once the extraction has finished, navigate to the destination you had chosen to extract the files to. You should see the MinGW64 folder. Inside, if you double click, you will notice there are a number of folders included. Now, the reason for this is this is actually designed as a standalone package, meaning that you don't have to be online or anything like that in order to make this work properly. The trick to that is all of those are included in with your actual files that you're going to run, those in the bin folder. Now, there are some caveats to making this work correctly and making it easy to run, like adding, say, the bin folder to your path variable so that wherever the bin folder is located, you can use the command line and simply just type GCC from anywhere. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you or you don't understand how to do that, I can show you how to do that in a later video. Now, in theory, if everything worked correctly and we followed all the steps properly, we should now be able to navigate to the MinGW folder. Inside the bin folder, we should have access to all of the different tools that are included in the tool set. In particular, we are interested in the gcc.exe. So let's go ahead and give that a shot, typing gcc dot exe dash v and sure enough there we go that's pretty much what we need and what we're going to have to do for the gcc compiler on windows again a little more advanced good news on linux however of course which is why i prefer linux everything's pre-installed we're good to go right out the box however not all the time with all installation with all os flavors is that going to be true or maybe you want to make sure you have the latest uh, repository version or updated version of gcc very simple just apt-get or dnf ubuntu fedora for example install it you're good to go to check to see if you're installed simply type gcc dash dash version and it will tell you the current version installed on your system no problem finally Small caveat, just make sure you have either administrative on Windows or pseudo privileges on Linux to execute the GCC command. Okay, so now that we have handled the compiler, 
Let's get Vim installed. Not too bad here either. On Windows, uh, you can use the graphical installer from the Vim website, which is probably what I would recommend just to make life simple. If you really want to get command line -y, you can use something like Chocolatey to do it that route. Uh, you also have the option of saying, hey, I don't want to use Vim at all. I'm going to use VS Codium or whatever other IDE you want. No problem in my eyes. Now, with Linux, straightforward here. All we got to do is basically sudo apt-get install and Vim. Basically, you can make sure that you have the latest version in case you are concerned that maybe it is out of date as well. And then once you are fully installed, simply type vim-v and it will pop up with all the latest and greatest info for you. Now, Vim has done a wonderful thing because many people are, they often are afraid of Vim and there's a long running joke that you can't escape. So what Vim has done is inside their version file, they have said, we will tell you how to escape this. It's not too hard. And I will tell you just to reiterate in case you may have gotten to this point and not know how to get back to your command prompt. Very simply, hit the escape button, hit your shift button and semicolon, which will produce a colon. You then hit the letter Q, followed by the enter button, and magically, there we go. Back to Vim. That's simple. And in case you want to just see the version information without getting too crazy there, you can type in vim dash dash version and that will give you long output there for the version info all right not too bad was that not too bad at all now we'll do one extra bonus step here for anybody that wants to take it the extra mile however at this point you basically are ready to create your first c program by simply typing vim hello dot c and first says hello okay now, we can get to what I kind of consider to be the fun part, configuring Vim to better suit our needs as a C programmer. For this tutorial, for this video, and for brevity, I'm just going to do a basic configuration here. I'm not going to go into plugin management and adding all the advanced features there. Uh, I can do a second advanced video on Vim itself. Just wanted to keep this short for the introductory tutorial here. So, when it comes to configuring Vim in a basic sense, very simple, all you have to do is access your Vim configuration file. Now, where is that located? That's actually in your home folder, and it is .vimrc. Now, I'm going to open it read-only because I can't remember my pseudo password at this point, but we can simply navigate back to our home folder, type in vimrc, and it will give us access to our Vim configuration file. File. It basically has a few keywords. It also follows the key value pairing style for configuration. Basically, you've got a variable, you set that variable to some value, some key, you set that at some value. Uh, the keywords like set, color scheme, syntax, things of that nature, these will allow you to manipulate certain things like turn on line numbers, turn on your syntax, set your color scheme, you can do indentation for say C in our case, and you can do things like set your back background, tab stop, uh, no expand, and your font styles. Now, there are things like shift width, uh, soft tab stop, other preferences that as you get more familiar with them can start to change. And of course, that is up to you as you, you know, kind of get more used to the environment. And there are, of course, additional features that Vim allows us to do. We can use plugins like uh, You Complete Me or Syntastic. You can also, through your uh, Vim RC file. As I mentioned, I can cover that if you guys desire. And there you have it. With these settings, you have now provided yourself with a little more comfortable environment for programming in the C language. Pretty much good to go at this point, whether you're on Windows or Linux. Remember, the key here is configuration, customization, and learning what preferences you desire. It's a great tool if you learn it. If you don't want to, hey, you're not hurting my feelings, but I sure love it. All right. Well, if you found any of this useful, eh, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If you found any of it helpful, please, please give it a like, subscribe for more programming tips, and let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions or maybe, 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 maybe there's something you want to know and uh, here in the future outside of the Lame C programming tutorial. I'll uh, see what I can do. Till then, thank you all so much for watching.